Welcome to eTeachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator, master storyteller. Today I'm going to read a story called Crown, an ode to the fresh haircut. It was written by Derek Barnes and illustrated by Gordon C. James. When it's your turn in the chair, you stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walk through that door. You came in as a lump of clay, a blank canvas, a slab of marble. But when my man is done with you, they'll want to post you up in a museum. That's my word. He'll drape you like royalty with that cape to keep the fine hairs off of your neck and your princely robes. It's amazing what a tight fade, high low bulb does for your confidence. Dark season. Who knows? You might just smash that geography exam tomorrow and rearrange the entire principal's honor roll. A fresh cut does something to your brain, right? It hooks up your intellectual. You're a star, a brilliant, blazing star. Not the kind that you'll find on a sidewalk in Hollywood. Nope, they're gonna to have to wear shades when they look up to catch your shine. He'll lean you back in a chair, dab that cool shaving cream on your forehead, and then craft a flawless line with that razor, slow, steady surgical. It frames your swagger. The cute girl in the class across the way won't be able to keep her pretty eyes off of you. Her friends will giggle and whisper, girl, he's so fine. Yeah, that's what they'll say. The whole school will be seasick from the rows and rows of ripples. You'll have more waves on your head than the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to my do-rag and patience. There's a dude to the left of you with the faux hawk, deep part, skin fade. He looks presidential. Maybe he's the CEO of a tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. Dude to the right of you, looks majestic. There are thousands of black angels waiting to guide and protect him as soon as he steps a foot out that door. That's how important he looks. There's a dude standing in the mirror that can't get over the masterful designs crafted on the side of his dome. Everywhere he goes, people ask for his autograph. He looks that fresh. He looks like he owns a few acres of land on Saturn. Maybe there's a river named after him on Mars. He looks that important. There are two dudes, one with locks, the other with cornrows, and a lady with a butterscotch complexion. And that all they want is a shape up, tapered sides, a trim, in a crisp but subtle line. And sometimes in life, that's all you ever need, a crisp but subtle line. When your barber is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change. When his fingertips hit you with that apple green alcohol or that witch hazel, it'll sting, but not like a scorpion or a hornet. More like an electric stamp of approval. And when you see the cut yourself and that handheld mirror, you'll smile, a really big smile. That's the you that you love the most. That's the you that wins everything. That's the gold medal you. Every person in the shop will rise to their feet and give you a round of applause for being so fly. Not really, but they'll look like they want to. You'll see it in your eyes.
It's the look your English teacher gives you when she hands you your last test with a bright red 97 slapped on it. It's how your mother looks at you before she calls you beautiful. Flowers are beautiful. Sunrises are beautiful. Being viewed in your mother's eyes as someone that matters, now that's beautiful. And you'll take it. You don't mind at all. Finally, he'll remove your cape, then swipe you down with a brush made from a golden horsetail. You'll put the money in his hand without even expecting change back. Tip that man, tip that man. It was worth it. It always is. You know why? Because you'll leave out of the shop every single time, feeling the same exact way. Magnificent, flawless, like royalty. Hello world. The end. So why did I choose this book, Crown and Ode to the Fresh Cut? This book, um, I always say it's kind of revolutionary because it just shows the simple life of a black boy going to get his hair cut. But in a cultural way, getting a haircut just makes them feel so much more confident. It builds their self-esteem and you just feel good. Um, as a teacher, I would have this book in my classroom because it's so important to have a window and a mirror. So a window means that it's something where you're just looking in, but you might not connect it. But a mirror means that you look at it and it reflects something that you know or experience or believe. And so in a classroom, you should have both. As we think about social justice and anti-racist behavior, we have to be an ally. And in order to do that, you have to have a window and a mirror. So this book talks about the traditions in the African-American community, the cultural um, aspect of going to the bar barber shop and being surrounded by your peers and also your elders and just the confidence that this boy um, exudes once he's finished getting his hair cut. As a teacher, the vocabulary words in here are very strong, metaphor, simile, alliteration. You could use this book from kindergarten to eighth grade, in my opinion. Um, and so in a classroom, I would have my students make connections. Maybe you go to the barber shop or to the hair salon or ask questions. Maybe you don't go to the barber shop or the hair salon. Maybe you go over someone's house or maybe your father cuts your hair, but being able to look into someone else's life and see it in its simplest forms helps you to understand and gain respect for someone else's culture. Um, and also when I looked at the back of this book, Derek Barnes wrote something that really spoke to me because he said, this particular book focuses, and I quote, on the humanity, the beautiful, raw, smart, perceptive, assured humanity of black boys, sons, brothers, nephews, grandsons, and how they see themselves when they highly approve of their reflections in the mirror. Deep down inside, they wish that everyone could see what they see, a real life, breathing, compassionate, thoughtful, brilliant, limitless soul that matters, that desperately matters. We've always mattered. And so for me, I surround my son with books and images of boys who are experiencing in the simplest forms, a life that matters and is filled with joy. And even here, this book was given to me uh, during my baby shower, peekaboo bedtime. This book was given to me uh, during my son's blessing. And so in my home, I have these books, but these same books I would also keep in my classroom. If we want to teach our children to have um, social justice and to be anti-racist, it's incumbent upon us as parents and as educators to expose them to different books that show African-American boys and girls in a positive light. So please like, comment, subscribe. E Teaches 365 for education and culture need. Thank you.